and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the two to four player game, Raise Arcana, designed by Tom Lehman and published by Sandcastle Games, who helped sponsor this video. Whether you're an alchemist, a druid, or a necromancer, it's a time of great magic. And your fellow mages are crafting artifacts, summoning dragons, conquering places of power. And there's no way you're going to let them have all those wonders to themselves. So join me at the table, and let's learn how to play. To set up, put the five double-sided places of power in the center of the play area. And for your first game, they recommend using the side with this gold symbol in the upper right-hand corner. But for later games, you can randomly select which sides to use. Also, below these, put the eight tiles known as the magic items. Nearby, also place the cards with this back, which you should shuffle into a face-down pile, dealing two face-up beside it. Also, place the tray holding the various essences known as Calm, Death, Elan, Life, and Gold. And in its center, there's room for these tokens known as the five times chips. Each player should now collect one of each type of essence, placing it in front of themselves, and they can also take a player reference too. In this video, we'll be setting up for two players. And now you'll randomly pick a person, giving them this first player token. Next, find the decks labeled Mages and Artifacts and shuffle them separately. Deal two mages and eight artifacts to each player and then return all of the leftover cards unseen to the box. Each player will privately examine their own hand and then shuffle their artifacts into their own personal deck, offering them to an opponent to cut. They then draw three of these cards to form their opening hand. And once everyone has done this, they'll then pick one of their two mages to place face up on the table in front of themselves, returning the other one unseen to the box. For your first games, you can instead choose to find the mage and three artifacts that all share the same number in their bottom right-hand corner, either one, two, three, or four. Just have each player take one of these groupings, which will include their mage and an opening hand of three artifacts. They are then dealt five artifacts face down to form their artifact deck. In this way, just as before, each player will have eight artifacts, five here and three in hand. Once players have their mage, opening hand, and deck, then, in counterclockwise order, starting with the player to the right of the first player, each person chooses one of the magic items from this row and places it face up in front of themselves. And that's the setup. In Ray's Arcana, players will be using a variety of artifacts and activating special powers in an effort to gain the 10 or more points required to win the game. The game is played over a series of rounds, broken into three steps each, which are summarized on this included reference tile. And this also details how to set up the game on the other side, which is quite handy. The first step, known as collecting essences, is performed by all of the players at the same time. So let's see how this works. First, look for this symbol on your components. Your components are anything you've placed face up in front of you. And at the beginning of the game, that won't be much. Just your mage and the magic item that you selected. But later, you might also have artifacts, monuments, and places of power. Check all of those components for this collect symbol and resolve anything showing in its attached banner. This will usually be more symbols, but your reference card will remind you how all of these work and we'll go over several of them in this video. When you see any of these essence symbols, you just take the amount shown from the supply and add it to your personal collection. So in this case, you would gain two calm, or here, one calm, one life, and one elan. Though for the rest of this video, I'll just refer to the essences by their color. So one blue, one green, and one red. If you see a slash, it means you pick one of the options presented. So either blue or red, but not both. This symbol means that you take two of any kind of essence, and they can be the same or different. But be sure to look closely for any smaller symbols beside it. These are restrictions, and in this case it means that when you're picking the two essences you want, you are not allowed to take either gold or black. Or here, you can pick any three essences, but none of them can be gold. As we'll learn later, some cards have the ability to allow you to store essences directly on them. And if so, during the collect step, you may choose to take from any number of these as well. And you can take essences off of some components and not others, but if you take any amount off a given component, then you must take it all. The Vault is a card that can collect gold on it, but note that its banner here says that no matter how much gold is here, if you leave it there, then you can collect from the tray any two essences, excluding gold. Whenever you see an arrow like this, it means that you resolve the symbols on the left to get the ones on the right. So if I did this, then I could not take the gold from here this round. 
and instead I might gain two essences like blue and green. In the collect phase of the next round, I can again choose to either take the gold that's here or resolve this effect. So to summarize, in this step, every player must resolve all of their own collect symbols and they may take essences stored directly on their components. And you can do these in any order. So I might choose to take a blue essence for this magic item. I might collect the two gold from my duelist mage. I'll gather three essences from the hanging gardens here. I'll choose to leave the three red essence on this card, but I must collect a red one for this effect. It is possible that you may run out of an essence, but these pieces are not meant to be limited. A player who has five or more of a particular essence can take one of these tokens and then return four of them back to the container for other players to use, putting one of the essences on top. And now this counts as five of that type. I did mention that this step is done simultaneously by all of the players, but in rounds where they believe it matters, a person can request this step be done in turn order, starting with the first player performing all of their collections, then the next player in clockwise order, and then the next player and so on. Once the collection step is over though, you move on to the action step, and this is performed in turns, starting with the first player and then going clockwise around and around the table. And on your turn, you'll perform one of five possible actions. These are again all listed here on this round summary tile, and we'll go through each one starting with placing an artifact. To do this, you pick one from your hand and pay its cost, shown here in the upper left-hand corner, returning those essences from your collection back to the supply. The artifact is then placed face up in front of you, like this, making it a new component for you to be able to use later. Sometimes a cost will show this symbol, which we learned means any type of essences. So for this one, we'd pay one green and then any two others. And in very rare cases, there may be no cost to play a card at all. Another action you may instead take is to claim a monument or one of these places of power, putting it in front of you as a new component. All monuments cost four gold, so you can pay to take either of the ones in the face-up display or the top one of the deck. If you take one of these, then replace it immediately with a new one from the top of the deck, if possible. The places of power are all face-up on the table, and to take one, you just pay its cost and claim it. Collecting enough essences to pay for things, especially early on, can be kind of tricky. So another action you can instead perform on your turn is to discard any one card still in your hand for either one gold or any two other essences. To separate your discards from your other played components, they recommend tucking them sideways under your deck face up. And these can be inspected by the players at any time. The next action, and one of the most important, is using a power. Many components will list one or more powers, each on their own rows, and if there's a cost to perform it, it will be shown to the left of an arrow, and the result you gain is on the right. So let's go through a few of these to make sure we understand all the symbols that we might encounter. This symbol means that we must rotate this card sideways, and a small x on an essence means that you must spend it from your personal supply, and then you would collect a red and a black essence. So to perform this action, we would do this, and then gain these. Once a card has been rotated like this, its effects cannot be used again. This top line effect costs two green, and then you add a gold to this card. Gold here will then be available for you to collect during the next round's collection step, if you wish, as we saw earlier. Also, you'll notice that this effect does not require turning the card. So if we had two more green essences, then on a future turn, we could perform this action again, and then add another gold. There's also another action we could perform here, which says you can rotate the card to just add a gold to it. But now, because the card has been rotated, we will not be able to use any of its effects further for the rest of this round. Rotating this fiery whip would give you three red essences from the supply, and all of your opponents would each take one. Or instead, you could rotate this card to destroy another one of your artifacts already in play to gain a number of essences equal to the amount showing in its cost banner, plus two of any others, but none of these essences can be gold. So in this case, I'd get one, two, three, four, five, six essences. Again, except for gold. The sacrificial daggers effect here says that you must destroy this card, the dagger itself, and discard another one. You can only destroy cards that are already in play, and when you're told to discard one, those must always come from your hand. The second line of this prism artifact says to rotate the card and then discard any number of identical essences to gain the same number of a different type of identical essence except for gold. So for example, I could trade in these three green and collect three black. 
This effect requires you to rotate the card and spend a red essence, but then you can straighten back up any one of your other components, making its actions available for you to use again this round. Not all abilities have a cost. For example, this top effect says to play a dragon from your hand at a discount of three essences from its typical cost. Dragons will be marked with this symbol in their upper right hand corner, so I could now play this card from my hand and ignore any three essences from its cost. If a discount would ever reduce a cost below zero, then you just pay nothing. Some effects will refer to creatures, which will have this symbol in their upper right hand corner. An effect with this symbol is called life loss, and after rotating this card, all opponents must lose two green essences if they have them. For each green they don't have, they must lose any other two essences if possible, which could also include gold. If you don't have any essences, you don't lose anything and any essences stored on your cards are safe. These will frequently have an option for the targeted players as well. For example, this one says that any rivals may choose to discard a card from their hand and ignore this effect. And remember, discarded cards go face up to the bottom of their deck. I had mentioned earlier that once a card is rotated, you cannot use its actions anymore, but there is one exception. If it has a react to power like this one, then this type of action can be used out of turn even if the card is rotated. Now what this means is that anytime I am targeted by a life loss effect, I can react to it by discarding one green essence, and then I would ignore whatever type of life loss effect it might have been. Now sometimes the react to effect actually requires you to be able to rotate the card. So in a situation like this where I'm being attacked by the wind dragon with a life loss effect, I couldn't use this react ability because my card is already rotated so I could not pay this part of the cost. The final symbol we'll cover is this one, which just means any component. So after resolving this cost, which requires rotating the card and then picking one of these types of essences to discard, you will then put that on another component. You've now seen enough of the various powers to be able to understand them for yourself, but if you have questions about specific cards, you'll find additional details here in the rulebook and within this glossary. The final action we need to discuss is passing. If you cannot, or do not wish to perform an action, you pass, and instead swap your magic item for a different one from the supply, flipping the new one to its passed side. You then draw one card from your deck. In the game, if your deck is ever empty and you need to draw, reshuffle any discards into a new draw pile if possible, and then continue drawing as much as you can of what you are owed. Now, if you're the first person to pass during a round, you also take the first player token and flip it over to this passed side. If you had been the first player and you pass first during a round, you'll keep this token and still flip it over. Either way, once a player has passed, they cannot do any more actions during the round. The other players will continue as normal, skipping over them. A player who has passed also ignores any effects from other players that would cause them to lose life, but they can still gain essences from rival powers. Play will continue until all of the players have passed, and then you go to the third step of a round, checking for victory. Here, you'll look to see if any player has 10 or more points showing on their components. Points are found within red wax seals. Every monument provides points, some artifacts do, as well as all places of power. And many of these will also give you additional points based on how many essences you have on them. You even get a point for having the first player token. If at least one player has 10 or more points, the game is over and the player with the most points wins. Now, that's not the case here, but let's just pretend for a moment that it was. In the case of a tie for most points, the player among them with the most essences in their essence pool, counting gold as double, would win. If there's still a tie, then the tied players would share the victory. If no one has 10 or more points, like we have here, instead all players straighten all turned components, the first player token is then flipped over, and all magic items are flipped face up, and a new round begins. One thing to notice is that there are a couple of effects, like the one that we see here on Coral Castle, that allow you as an action to initiate a check for victory during the action step. And this can be a clever thing to do if you currently have the ability to win, but might not by the end of the round. And that's how you play Raise Arcana. The rules also provide a variant to allow you to draft cards or to play a three game match between two players, but I'll leave those for you to discover on your own. That said, if you have any questions about anything else that you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below, and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at BoardGameGeek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. 
And if you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get notifications anytime we post a new video. But until the next episode, thanks for watching.